Hello and welcome to Tech This Week, where we bring you up to speed with the most important developments in the enterprise and emerging technologies in India. In today's episode, we will talk about the rush of early and late stage capital in the homegrown edtech sector. Pankaj Makkar of Bertelsmann India Investments joins us on the show to talk about uh, the deals of the week. All about staking in cryptocurrencies. Also, Nishal Shetty from Wazirx joins us on the show to talk about the current state of the market. Why TCS is collaborating with Yale University and the Tech Mahindra Rakuten deal. Also joining me in this episode from the Tech Circle newsroom are Vignesh Anantaraj, Pail Ganguly, and Supriya Roy. So let's begin uh, with the edtech deals that we saw this week. Uh, there were quite a handful of them. Pail. Well, uh, Shweta, any introduction to this space will be incomplete without Baidu's big bang round, which it announced this week. Even though we know, don't know the amount it, ha- it has raised, uh, it raised uh, money from Black Pants Capital and Hedge Fund Archeon Capital. Uh, according to media reports, the company is now valued at over $11 billion. Well, uh, also the other edtech uh, platform, uh, an academy which raised money from SoftBank to turn into a unicorn, uh, acquired Course Savvy, which is a UPSC examination test prep platform. Oh, an academy is on a roll, uh, Payal. Isn't this like their fourth or sixth acquisition for this year? No, uh, Vignesh, it's the fifth acquisition. But yes, oh. I wouldn't be surprised if they clock in more by the end of this year. Yeah, we should see them uh, give a. Uh, by juice a run for their money sometime soon not any interesting but uh, let's see i think both of them operate in similar spaces but i don't think they're targeting the same set of audiences while by juice is mm-hmm. more uh, school focused and k12 focused and academy is slightly leaning towards the examination preparation sector which includes uh, you know um, upsc as well as uh, postgraduate uh, medical preparation for which they acquired prep ladder earlier this year and all of the stock is also leading to all of these niche tech platforms right shweta you yeah. heard anything from that space yeah the buoyancy also sort of you know uh, sets in motion the funding for uh, the niche ed tech platforms and the companies with edges in cc here right so another uh, way to actually shweta. defend another way to differentiate right is is the kind of um, the kind of market share that each of these companies have overseas as well so with the white hat junior acquisition uh, weeks ago byju's kind of sorted you know when the overseas way uh, you know before somebody like an academy did who looks more into the you know civil services in the india scene, how many you know? of you have been looking at the pop up uh, ads by oh. white hat junior i think twitter the, is like on a roll the yeah. memes don't stop You know, at this point, I'm I'm just considering. Oh, obviously, I don't have kids, and no, there's no kid at home. I'm just considering to like go ahead and buy it just so that they stop giving me these ads. Maybe you should learn coding, Supriya. That's something to do. Yep, someday. Also, anyway, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's not just edtech platforms, Supriya. Also, uh, the companies which have adjacencies, right? such as a uh, saas platform for coaching institutes and tutors uh, class plus they even they have raised funding this week they raised around uh, 10 million dollar from alpha wave incubation and uh, binu a colleague reported exclusively on the extended seed round of edugorilla which is a government job uh, preparation platform yeah but but yeah apart from these uh, an academies and byju's right the uh, the others too in the space have uh, garnered quite some uh, Uh, you know, major foreign investors into their cap tables this past uh, month. In fact, uh, earlier this month, I think it was September, first September or something, or around then, when Erudite is Learning Solutions, it um, so the the company had offers executive education programs. It had raised about 113 millions um, million dollars in a Series D round from a cluster of overseas overseas investors. So to to give us a quick uh, status check on. Um, how the industry is faring we have one one of uh, eruditus eruditus's investors bertelsman uh, bertelsman's india's managing director pankaj makkar joining us hi pankaj thank you for joining us hi it's a pleasure to be here a lot of in- consumer interest seep into the their way of becoming an investor interest especially with d2c startups like edtech companies but beyond that beyond the whole uh, narrative of how you know kids are moving online with the pandemic and everything as an investor how do you how are you really just looking at this uh, entire place as a whole 
No, I think it was just a matter of time before education sector uh, using technology, which is what we call it edtech, was to see this entire euphoria. Right? If you look at fundamentally education sector on an offline side, it is worth tens of billions of dollars. Right? Uh, whether it's K-12, higher education, and, and otherwise. And now, as a lot of these offerings go online, as has happened in retail, it has happened in music, it has happened in uh, you know other sectors like OTT and so on. Uh, as any of that happens, moves, users move, and eventually then monetization also kind of moves online. Now, the key reason why it is happening now, why the pandemic has kind of helped it, even if pandemic was not there, we always thought that at this point, edtech would take a fairly strong way because in trying to teach any kid online, you need significant amount of video bandwidth so that there is live classing or video classroom, etc. that can happen. Now, that particular variable that solved for edtech to become viable was fundamentally the geo-revolution. Indian consumers, unlike wanting to not pay for content, etc., love to pay for education content because all parents and children know that this is their way of becoming much smarter either in classrooms or taking competitive exams and making sure that their lives are a lot more better. So monetization and education is never an issue. So broadly what I'm getting is that pandemic or no pandemic, this was bound to happen and this was only a start of the entire momentum towards uh, you know, yes. the interest in the space. But yeah, since we've, that, that's the consumer interest that we've covered, uh, how how much of that really seeps into the investor way of looking at me? And, and this entire discussion here makes me makes me um, think of a more, more um, perhaps a tangential question. So we're seeing a lot of these companies like Unacademy going about uh, announcing acquisitions all through the year. So I'm saying with the, the kind of um, scalability plans that they have in mind, and the kind of capital uh, they've been drawing across uh, from investors across the globe. What are the wrong things or what are the right things, whichever way that you'd like to put it across, will help towards gaining further momentum in this space? As far as gaining momentum in any business is concerned, it's the function of getting more users and then take, you know, monetizing them a lot more over time. It starts with, of course, you know, making sure that India is a large market and you can get a lot of students to come online. Now, because offline schools are, are not there, a lot of students are studying online, whether it's even uh, UPSC exams, as if people used to go to offline study centers in various cities, now they are all looking at online options because they can't go out because of pandemic. Now, because of that, users going on to online platforms and increase, and the testing is happening, sampling is happening, and so on. Now, once these you know, uh, children or students come onto the platform and start studying, you need to, of course, keep giving them significant amount of content by virtue of which they start spending money on the platform, they see it valuable, and they get good results out of it. And you just need to make sure that you are monetizing that uh, consumer properly over, over years, which is what most of the companies are trying to do. Even if they acquire certain products, which they don't have it in-house, they can use those products to monetize the same number of students. And that is why I think some of the companies are looking at acquiring uh, different uh, product companies. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, Pankaj. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Sukhra. That was Pankaj Makkar of uh, Bertelsmann India Investments. Uh, and moving on, uh, this week we also saw Mumbai-based cryptocurrency exchange Vazirx launching a staking facility on its platform. Uh, the facility, according to the company, will help its users earn annualized returns of 2 to 16 percent per annum on their investments. Oh wow, 2 to 16 percent is not bad at all, Shweta, considering the market that we have today. Although it's been rising, it's kind of on a it's kind of been uh, on a downward spiral over the past four or five days. I think today is slightly different, but as long as the principal depreciates, I don't think anybody should care. But you kept talking about staking. What exactly is staking? So staking here, Vignesh, refers to the uh, process of buying or holding crypto coins, uh, which in turn mm -hmm. validates the transaction on proof of ledger in the uh, in the blockchain. So, uh, sorry, it's proof of stake, which is in the blockchain ledger, uh, which thereby strengthens the network. So once a user validates the transaction, he or she receives uh, an award, which is comparable to okay, bank this deposit is interest. The, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, and and thus uh, it increases the value as as and when uh, you know the co uh, the coins the held coins uh, grows. 
Got it. Uh, but Shweta, isn't cryptocurrency's future in India itself under question because um, the government came out with a bill uh, for discussion saying that they're going to ban cryptocurrency and regulate digital currencies as well? Yeah, right, Pyle. And and on the same line, uh, to talk to talk on the same thing, we have uh, Nishchal Shetty, who's the CEO and co-founder of Vazirex. Uh, so uh, let's welcome him. Uh, hi, Nishchal. Thanks a lot for taking the time out. Uh, so let's begin uh, with, uh, you know, uh, the, the crypto market in India right now, like uh, what are the threats and opportunities, the general sentiment? Sure. Um, see, a few events have happened in the last uh, six months that have helped the crypto ecosystem, um, starting with the uh, Supreme Court uh, ruling against the RBI ban, in, mm-hmm. which happened on the 4th of March. So that sort of opened up the market to a large extent. And then the lockdown that came in soon after, uh, a lot of people started searching for ways to invest in alternative investment uh, methods online. And uh, cryptocurrency happened to be one of those upcoming uh, alternate investment options for people. So a lot of Indians started uh, rushing to our exchange as well. We saw a sign of spike up. Uh, because they wanted alternative investments, knowing that the traditional investment options were largely dependent on the uh, offline world where the pandemic has had a negative effect. And uh, crypto being online, people realized that this would be a good investment option. The other is a lot of people have lost jobs and uh, they're trying to find ways to make money online. And uh, again, crypto comes up as one of those uh, uh, you know options. So that's something that happened that started right during the lockdown uh, the last six months what has happened is the price of cryptocurrencies has appreciated net net compared to uh, the other assets also crypto has given better returns in the last uh, three to six months and that has motivated a lot of people to now start looking at crypto as an investment mechanism so all of these have actually helped us uh, grow as as an industry even as a company for us Vazirex. we've been growing faster in this whole uh, six months of the lockdown and the pandemic in India, and and uh, uh, talking specifically about the government's stance, uh, b- there are a couple of reports which are taking rounds that uh, the cabinet is expected to soon discuss a new bill uh, about uh, you know banning the crypto trade. Uh, so, uh, what do you have to say about that? Does it really make sense for the government uh, during you know the COVID slowdown to consider such a thing? Uh, not really. And uh, while I did read the reports, those are uh, not really confirmed. And uh, if you look at the uh, the list of bills that have been made public that will be picked up in the parliament, it uh, this uh, it does not include anything related to the crypto ban bill. So uh, if you look at objectively, what has the government announced? Government has really not announced anything around uh, crypto regulation right now. And we are still in the status quo where uh, it's a unregulated market. And uh, as an industry, we are pushing for regulation because the ban bill came around uh, two years ago where there was a lot of confusion in the ban, ban bill as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, if you look at the regulatory environment uh, today, in fact, yesterday, the e- European Union uh, came out with a post saying that they are going to regulate cryptocurrency. They want to set standards and they want to be ahead of the, uh, the rest of the world. So I think uh, India is going to take cue from all of this and go towards positive regulation. And that's the right way because we need to encourage crypto innovation in the country. So I'm all for positive regulation. And as an industry also, we are pushing for that. Yeah. Uh, also, Nishchal, uh, this uh, current slowdown, do you think this op- uh, offers uh, a sort of opportunity uh, for the government in terms of uh, the potential tax revenue uh, that can be drawn from uh, crypto trading? Absolutely. In fact, uh, uh, that's one of the, um, you know, I would say major reasons why the government should encourage because the cryptocurrency market in general has been uh, unaffected or even been positively growing globally, not just in India. And that's because this is a pure online uh, form and in the lockdown, most people are coming online. So the opportunity to make money for the government from a tax point of view, uh, that's a tremendous opportunity. And if they regulate it, this will like you know grow 10 times or even 100 times the market size for the government to make some sizable gains in taxation so i'm all for uh, you know regulation because of these factors and taxation plays an important role in this uh, great insights there nishal thank you so much for taking the time out thanks a lot shweta
And guys, talking about blockchain, we need to understand that blockchain isn't only limited to cryptocurrencies. And I believe TCS and Yale University over the past week might have built something that could potentially increase the adoption of blockchain for enterprises and uh, other companies as well. So TCS has partnered with Yale University to develop a new solution that addresses current issues in blockchain. That is, it is usually cumbersome. It has delays in deployments. It's pretty costly. And there is a major lack of trust, mostly because it is associated with cryptocurrencies, which is right with the news of bad actors, hackers, and all of that stuff. But most importantly, uh, the problem with blockchain currently is because it relies on a centralized management system that prevents its users from uh, controlling their own data. That's why many companies are skeptical about uh, coming onto blockchain. Well, now Yale and TCS said they have developed a new decentralized storage mechanism which will utilize something known as content addressable storage, which means that information can be stored and retrieved based on the content it holds and not necessarily where the content resides. Well, uh, to add to that, Vignesh, for our listeners, I would like to say that uh, blockchain also has private blockchain and public blockchain. Uh, whereas uh, private blockchain provides better scalability and identity verification, the benefits of public blockchain uh, include better trust and decentralization. And I think TCSEL believe they can bring the best of both of these worlds together, which is great. So we could have a hybrid blockchain solution just like we have hybrid cloud, multi-cloud. And the product has already gone through its proof of concept stage. And we will have to see how soon TCS can actually bring it to market. It could be a game changer. That that was quite some knowledge transfer that just happened now with all this inputs that you guys had to offer. But yeah, let's in other news in the tech enterprise, uh, in the enterprise tech ecosystem at Tech Circle, we covered Tech Mahindra, which disclosed some of its work around the around its strategic investments. It sold about 18.5 million shares uh, of its uh, 2018 investment in telecom services provider called um, Altios Networks. Uh, for $45 million to Japanese firm Rakuten. So the 2018 investment for a 17.5% stake in the Massachusetts headquartered Altio Star had amounted to $15 million back then. So while Tecma Interact didn't quite elaborate on this strategy move behind you know this disclosure to the stock exchanges, it mentioned an associated deal. So it tied up with Rakuten's um, Globe, it tied up as uh, Rakuten's global uh, go-to opportunities partner for Rakuten Mobile. But yeah, moving back, um, as but moving back to the strategic investments bit, at least for this year in 2020, Tech Mahindra seems to have slowed down or phased back from further engagement in an otherwise active area of its interest. That is to uh, pick on overseas companies operating in verticals of software um, uh, development uh, applications. So last I heard, um, because last I heard was a rejig of sorts in only April when it changed certain terms to complete two previously disclosed acquisitions. Uh, in, in the But yeah, like we all know, in the pre-COVID-19 world, Tech Mahindra had announced several such deals back to back, be it uh, New York based uh, uh, New York based digital media agency Bond Group or uh, Canadian IT consultancy Objectwise Consulting Group or the general push it had towards expanding to China in 2019. To add in there, uh, we covered exclusively the fact that Japanese industrial supply uh, e-commerce company Monotaro has entered into a JV with Mtex Engineering, uh, which owns business to business e-commerce platform IndustryWide. As part of the transaction, Monotaro will invest $15 million and will pick up a majority stake in the JV. And, um, you know, industry buying, as all of you know, is backed by SEF partners and uh, multiple other venture capital firms. Well, uh, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Tech This Week. Do stay tuned in uh, and logged on to techcircle.in for more news and updates. Thank you very much.